All right, for today's Purple to Black Belt class, we have a few things that we need to go over with you. One, we're gonna talk about leadership and all the stuff we've gone over this month. Why? Why would we wanna do all this? It seems like a lot of work. Well, there's some really good reasons. So we have that to go over. In addition to that, we wanna go over moving and striking, moving around a, a target, throwing strikes at it. Very important for sparring, right? And we'll do that with some punches and some combinations. Finally, we're gonna be refining some of the details in Kata Kick too. You know, this is not a great class if you're having a hard time remembering the basic pattern, but man, if you're trying to go from being okay to great, we're gonna be working on some of those things today. So let's get started with some warm-ups, get our body ready, and then we'll jump into the main part of class. All right, so we're gonna get started with our warm-up to prepare our body for class to prevent some injuries, get us ready to move at good speed without risking injury to our muscles and to our joints. Right, so this warm up's got uh, four moves, each one is 30 seconds. We're starting off with some snowboard hops, which is a lot like a ski jump, only go forward and back instead of side to side. Ready, set, and go. Right, so we're just hopping, nice and easy. Now, if you're one of those people who maybe this is not great for, it hurts your knees or something like that, you can just do these as steps, right? And it'll take some of the pressure off. It's definitely not as good of a warm up, but you'll start getting those muscles moving, which is kind of the goal, right? So I'm going back to jumping, right? but maybe you've got some plantar plant fasciitis, maybe you've got some bad knees, maybe you've got someone who's underneath of you, right? Like downstairs who doesn't like you jumping over them, okay? Next move we're gonna do is some tap down knees, right? On a tap down knee, you start in a fighting stance. You're just gonna tap down, right? Maybe you're touching your knee, maybe you're touching your shin, Wherever it is, you're not trying to stretch the muscle, you're just trying to engage the muscle. So I lean down, I come up and knee. I lean down, come up and knee. All right, so we're gonna go for 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Do the first side, turn sideways so you can see a little bit better. All right, a couple things to think about as you do tap down knees. One, again, don't stretch, just engage that muscle. Two, Try and look at one thing in front of you on the floor, maybe like six to 10 feet in front of you. By keeping your eyes on one thing that's kind of in the middle, it'll help you maintain your balance. If you're looking straight ahead, looking at your toes, you'll start to get dizzy. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing the other leg. Do these towards you, ready, and go. All right. So on this one, you may be able to see better. I never really look up at the camera, right? I look at that spot in front of me to help me to maintain my balance and not fall over. Because again, we're trying to warm up, not fall down. All right, keep going a few more seconds. Almost done with this one. Good also to breathe out when you do your knee. That's a benefit. And that's time. Okay, last warm up move. We're going to start with our feet apart. It's kind of like a ready stance. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just twist and twist, Brings elbow, bring our elbow across. Elbow across, elbow across. All right, so we're twisting, getting our body ready to rotate, which we do in so many of our moves in martial arts, whether it's punching, blocking, anything where we're trying to generate power, right? We wanna be able to turn our hips, twist our body, right? So we're just doing a little bit of action to get that ready. If you know how to do some details on the elbow, you can work that into here. If you're not as familiar with how to do these kind of cross elbows, it's not super important. Like I said, it's just our warm up and we're done. Let's get ready for our main part of our class today. All right, today we're gonna to do a quick review of some of our basic punches. After we do our quick, quick review of basic punches, we're gonna put them into a different move. To start off, we're in our fighting stance. We're gonna do just a simple jab. Ready, one, two, three, four, five. Switch, same basic idea. One, two, three, four, five. Good, switch. Now, a couple things I want you to make sure you're doing. One, make sure after you jab, you come back to like a normal fighting stance, not all the way together, and don't leave it far apart. Normal fighting stance is a good fighting stance for what we're doing. Also, keep your hand up, right? This other hand staying up high, super important. Let's do a few jabs, remember, hand up, step. Ready, one, two, three, four, 
five. Switch your legs. I'm punching, punching sideways so you get a different point of view, but you don't have to punch sideways. You can punch straight. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, pretty simple. Let's switch it up to doing the cross. We're going to twist and punch. Ready? One, twist, come back. Two, three, four, five. Switch it up, the same basic idea. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're gonna work on a detail or two. I want you to focus on my back foot. You see how my heel pops up as I throw my cross? My weight is shifting forward. I also have to bend my front knee, right? We wanna make sure that this is a little bit bent. So this would be straight. A little bit bent is what we want. It's a lot safer. It gives us more power. So I want you to be aware of what your legs are doing as we do this cross. Twisting and bending. One, two, a little bend is good. Three, not a big bend. Four, five, good. And going the other way. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Moving ahead. We're going to do a combination. We're going to do a jab and a cross. Right? Let's do five on each side together. Ready? One, jab, cross, reset, two, three, four, five. Good. And switch. Other side. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's talk detail. Now, most of the details are the same details that we had in the jab and the cross. Keep your hand up, step, things like that. There's one combination specific movement I want to make sure that we're doing correctly today, which is normally we do a jab and we reset. But when we do a jab cross, we do not reset. So it goes jab, then twist, then reset my feet. So you can see the difference between jab, reset, twist, don't do that. It's jab, twist, then reset. See the difference? I hope you can because that's one of the things we look for that you do properly as you do your punches. Let's do it. In our fighting stance, hands are up. Ready? One, and come back. Two, three, four, five. Okay. We're going the other direction. Same basic idea. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's a, just a quick basic review of our jabs and our crosses. Now I gotta spice things up. All right. So now we're gonna use our chair, right? And what we're gonna be doing is we're using our chair as kind of a stand-in for a target. If you have a heavy bag or wave master and you want to use that great it's fantastic it'll be even better but for most of us we don't have that kind of equipment in our house we have a chair and a chair is just working as a target you could put almost anything there as long as it's about chair size right you could even put like a pillow on the floor and move towards that punch towards that whatever it is but a chair i find is readily accessible and easily used what you're going to find is if i'm in a fighting stance and I'm facing towards the chair. You can see I have one leg in front. My left leg is in front. As I move around this chair, and you're not going to be able to see this right now, but my left leg is in front. As I move around the chair over here, my left leg is in front, right? And this whole time, I want you to watch my shoulders now. As I move, I kind of keep this hand towards the chair, right? You can see my left hand is always forward as I'm rotating around the chair. Right? That's how we want to be able to move in a fighting stance. What a lot of people do is as they move around, they kind of like go this way. And we don't want that. <laughs> that would be bad. Now, let's do some punches towards the chair. Don't hit the chair. Towards the chair does not mean punch the chair. I've had so many kids this week punching chairs. I'm like, don't punch the chair. They're like, oh, that's right, you told me. Don't. All right, so if in my fighting stance, we're going to just do some jabs. So we jab toward the chair, and then we move. 
Jab towards the chair. And you move. Now you can see for me, the chair is low enough. Jab. That I won't hit. If your chair is too hot, jab. Either because you're a little bit shorter than me, jab. Or your chair is a little bit taller than mine. Let's go the other direction. Just stand far enough away that you can't hit it. Right? So like now I'm so far away I can't hit it. Can't hit the thing. Look how far out I am. Can't hit it. Right? Even if it was taller and or I was shorter. Right? But don't hit the chair is the big thing. Let's keep switching. Now what we're going to do is this time is we're just going to keep moving. And we're just doing like half circles. We're going halfway around. And then we're going halfway back. Right? As I'm doing this, you're going to punch when I say jab. Hit it. Jab. Right? And you can switch directions whenever you want. Jab. And maybe you don't have quite enough room in your house. Jab. To do the half circle. Jab. Maybe you can only go like a quarter circle. Right? You go this far, jab, and you go back. That's fine. Jab. Right? Jab. You can even do a full circle, but eh, I don't really recommend it. Ready? Jab. Because you can't see what I'm doing when you turn yourself completely around. Jab. And jab. Okay, that's pretty easy. And if you want to, you can even switch your legs whenever you want. I'm not going to do that because I want to make it consistent that you see. I always have that same leg in front. If you switch, you have to switch your legs. Now we're gonna throw our cross. We're gonna twist, and we come back. So as I circle, you can see I still have the same leg in front as I move around the chair. Boom. Other things we talked about with our punches are still important. Keep circling, keep punching, right? Bending your knee, turning your foot. We didn't forget about that stuff. That stuff didn't forget about us. Right? And as a matter of fact, that's a big part of what we're working on here. It's actually easy to walk. Right? Most of you are like, Sensei Jeff, I've been walking for years. Good. I'm glad you can walk. But the trick here is walking in a fighting stance and being ready to fire a punch or later on a kick whenever we need to slash want to. That's kind of what we're working on. Good, good, and stop. Okay, now we're gonna transition into throwing the jab cross combination. It's exactly the same as what we've been doing. If you feel like this is a very easy for you, feel free to move a little bit faster, right? I'm kind of doing this at like slow speed, right? Where I'm just moving very slowly, small steps, throwing punches. If you're like, since I feel fast, I want to throw punches a little bit quicker, you can just maintain your stance. That's the big thing. I'd rather you do it slow and right than fast and wrong, right? Here we go. Jab cross. Go. Jab cross. And start to move. Jab cross. Start to move. Jab cross. And move. And again, you can switch directions. Jab cross. Whenever you want. If you want to do it after a punch, jab cross. And you keep switching every time I say jab cross. Right? Or maybe you just go all the way to one side. Jab cross. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you're developing that ability to rotate around the target and throwing your strikes while maintaining your stance. Good. Jab cross. Good. Rotate. Jab cross. Rotate. Jab cross and rotate, jab cross. Okay, so, final round. This time, I can mix it up. So I could say, jab, or I could say cross, or I could say jab cross, or I could say jab, jab cross. Whatever I say, you do, right? Do your punches. In our fighting stance, last punching round. Go, you move. Again, it doesn't matter which direction you're going. Jack! Jack! Cross! You can switch directions whenever you want. Cross! Jack! Jack, cross! Jack, cross! Keep moving. Jack, cross! Jack! Ooh. Jab, jab. That's two jabs. Jab cross. Jab, jab cross. There's some footwork there. If you don't know, don't worry about it. 
and jab cross. Jab. Cross. Cross. Good. Jab cross. Jab cross. Jab. Jab. Jab cross. All right. So that's a really basic drill for being able to circle around a target, still throw our strikes. So we've done some punches towards the chair. What we're gonna do today now is we're gonna strike to expand the options that we have to us. And we're going to do some of our striking combinations instead of just our punches toward the chair. Now, as you're doing this, you wanna be much more aware of your range and how far you travel towards your target as you do your combination. Because what you're gonna find is you cover quite a bit of ground, especially in these long range combinations. And if you kick the chair, it feels bad. Now, if you're kicking a target at home, like you have your own wave mast or a heavy bag, again, you've got to be aware of your range so your last strike makes contact, or in the case of the chair, your last strike doesn't make contact. And what that's going to mean is you're going to take a much larger circle. Right? So normally, if we were just doing punches, I can stand this close and I can take this small of a step. I still don't hit with my punch. However, if I start throwing kicks, ow, everybody loses. So we want to be aware of our range and make sure we're staying farther and farther away. This is particularly useful if you're sparring and you're used to sparring against people who are maybe quite a bit taller than you and you want to stay away from them until you decide to get inside on them. All right? So with that being said, let's get going. All right? So we're in our fighting stance. We're gonna start circling. Let's just try and be in a pretty distant circle. You can see I'm like at a camera. I gotta be so far away to be able to set up these long range combinations as they get off to the edges, right? So we're just circling, right? Circling, circling, circling. And from here, we're gonna start throwing our combination. So we'll start off with the jab and front kick combination. Jab, front kick, hop step, front kick, regular front kick. I got pretty close and I'm going back to circle, right? Again, go jab, front, Pops to the front, regular front, and start circling. Right, and this is going to challenge you, go ahead through your combination, to learn the range of your strikes and be able to say like, oh man, I gotta be this far away to be able to miss, which means I've gotta be a little bit closer to be able to hit, go. Good, now for this one, you can also switch your legs whenever you like, because this is generally for a little bit more advanced students. Okay, so here, 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 good, keep circling. Maybe I'm all the way around the side. Maybe I'm gonna switch my legs now just because I'm gonna mix it up. I'm a little close on this one. Yeah, I was not quite as far away as I needed to be. I had to kick around the chair. Good, keep circling. Playing with your range. Don't hit the chair, go. Okay, for the next combination, especially if you're throwing the spinning back side kick, you've gotta be very aware of your range. The good thing is, if you hit with the bottom of your foot on a back step side kick, it doesn't hurt your foot all that much. If it hurts the chair, it can hurt your house. So, be careful with that one. We're in our fighting stance, start circling. Right, maybe like, oh, I don't know how far I'm going to be able to reach, how far away I need to be. That's what this exercise is all about. Go cross, roundhouse, side kick, spin back side kick. That was pretty close. Pretty close. It was just about the right range. I switched my legs when I did my combination. You don't have to. Go cross, round, side, and woo. Just about the right range. Good, I switched my legs again, but again, you don't have to go. All right, as you're throwing your combination, one of the things that impacts your range, good, keep circling, is where you put down your side kick, all right? So if I do my side kick and I put it way out, I'm gonna have to be much farther away. If I put it down very close, it gives me more room, all right? So you can play with that. Good, keep circling, ready? Throw your combination here, here, where you put your foot down. It's gonna make a big difference on your range. Good, keep circling. 
go. So from here, maybe I'm plant my leg out farther, and you can see, oh, now I'm hitting the chair. Right? See the difference that makes. Keep circling. And combo two, go. Good, keep circling. Now, what we're gonna do this time, keep moving, is I'll say combo one or combo two. And you do whichever one is. Right, combo one, combo two. Combo one is the one with the front kicks. Two is the one with the side kicks. One. Good, back in circle. Stay at range, don't hit the chair, it's important. Combo two. Good, back to circling. And again, you can switch your legs whenever you want. This is mostly about range, a little bit about movement, and maintaining your range while you do your movement. Good. And combo one. Got a little close. A little close. Combo two. Good. All right, and you can play with this as much as you want. It's a good challenge for you. You can circle as much as you want. But for now, we'll call it there. Let's get moving on to the next part of class. All right, so we're going to be wrapping up our discussion on leadership together. And what I want to talk to you about today is why you'd want to put in all this work. Right? Now, you might have thought about in the last few weeks, man, being a leader is hard, right? Because i got to I gotta know the way, and I gotta go the way, I gotta show the way. Can't I just get taken there, right? And the thing is, you, you kinda can, but you never really get to go where you want, right? It's kinda like when you're, uh, you're in a car, right? Now, most kids, you've never had a chance to drive a car. Your parents drive, and you just sit in the back seat and you go wherever they take you. So if they want to go to grandma's house, you're going to grandma's house. If they want to go to the dentist, you're going to the dentist, right? Wherever it is. Because in the car, the person who's driving, they're the leader of the car. Everybody else goes wherever they want. And you might think, well, I want to be in charge. I want to be able to pick where we go. Then that means you've got to be a leader. Right? You've got to know the way. Because if you don't know where you're going, you don't get to drive the car, right? You don't get to go there, right? You've got to sit in the backseat, go wherever they want. Oh, man. We we're going to the dentist again. I wanted to go to the candy store. Well, that may be why you're going to the dentist, but that's a whole other story, right? So it's really important for you, for you to be able to get where you want to go. You have to accept that responsibility of being a leader. And it will, in turn, give you a tremendous amount of freedom. The freedom to go where you want, to do what you want, become what you want. But the price of that freedom is responsibility, right? And that's what being a leader is all about, right? So everybody... What I want to challenge you to do right now is I want you to try and be responsible for one thing that you want, right? Something kind of small. And I want you to know the way and go the way in the very least, and then if you can, show the way. But pick something small, right? Like, man, you know, I want to, I want to have a happier house, right? I don't want to have everybody fighting, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the way. I'm going to make it so people aren't fighting in my house so much. Maybe I'll help out, right? Or... Whatever it is that makes you feel like, hey, you know what? I'm happy and I'm proud of myself for doing that. Maybe it's doing your martial arts exercise. Maybe you say, you know what? I'm going to practice a little bit more. I'm going to watch another couple of videos. Whatever it is. Right? So challenge yourself in some way to be a leader and take that small success. And from that, you can build great successes and things that you, know, you end up on the news and you're famous for. Right? So everybody, great job. Take that challenge. Pause this if you need some time to think about it. But otherwise, we're going to be moving on to the next part. We're going to be focusing in on a couple of the key footwork components um, for how to kick. Now, in particular, what we're going to focus on is what our kicking foot is doing in terms of what shape it is and how we're pointing it or flexing it. And then we're also going to work a little bit on what our base foot is doing. Now, to practice this, you're going to have a chair that you're going to put behind you. You could use something other than a chair, it's a table, a bed, whatever. Um, you want to kind of stand at the edge of it. I'll show you what I mean by that. 
I had my foot kind of even with the far side of the chair. So when I do my kick, right, because I'm going to do a roundhouse kick, I'm going to fall forward, I can land next to the chair. You don't want to be over here, where now when I go to kick, either I run into the chair or something like that, hurt myself, break the chair, knock it over, things like that. So you want to position yourself so your front foot is kind of even with what looks like the front foot of the chair. All right. So from here, all we're going to do is we're going to set ourselves up with our back towards the chair. You can use your hand on the chair for balance. We're really focusing on footwork today. So if you need to hold on to the chair for balance, but you slow down, that's a good thing. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to do our roundhouse kick. When we do our roundhouse kick, we're going to make sure that we're pointing our kicking foot. Okay? And we can hold on to that chair for balance so we can kind of check to make sure our foot is pointed. We're pointing our ankle, we're pointing our toes. All right, so we watch again. We're going to turn, hold on to the chair, kick, just like that. I'll show you one time from the side with the chair behind me, right? When I go to kick, you can see it. I have my hands on it. And this foot is pointed, not flexed. And again, it's pointing the ankle and the toe, not just pointing the toes and flexing the ankle. Okay, so we're gonna do a few of those together. Set yourself up, kick, hold it for a moment, and then we'll put it down in front. Ready, go one, kick, hold it, and then put it down in front like we land closed in our form. We'll reset, we'll go again. Two, kick, hold it. Good, and then land in front. And come on back, all right? Again, three, turn, kick, hold it. Make sure your foot is pointed, that's really important. Land in front, come back. Let's get two more in, kick, hold it. Land in front, one more to go, ready? Kick, hold it, and land in front, just like that. All right, now, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. If you have a chair that you can move, you can just move to the other side. Otherwise, you just kick the other direction, right? Set yourself up where your front foot is kind of even with the edge, the front edge. Ready? One, kick, make sure that's pointed, land in front. All right, let's keep going. We got four more. Turn, kick, hold it out there. Check that roundhouse kick, land in front. Three, kick, hold it. Now this is one of the more common mistakes that people have on their kick, is their foot comes like this. Get that pointed, All right? Very common, ends up hurting your foot, which I'm not a big fan of. Ready, kick. I just don't like it when students hurt themselves. I'm weird like that. Last time, point your toes, you oopsies. Point your foot, hold it out, land in front, and come on back. Okay, so not a bad start for our roundhouse kick. We're gonna add to this. Bring it back to the other side. Same basic idea. We're gonna do a roundhouse kick. We're not gonna hold it quite as long. We'll check to make sure it's pointed. Once you look at it, it's pointed, go ahead and put it down. Then we're going to add in the side kick. When we add in the side kick, we flex our foot, pulling our toes towards our face. Ready? One kick, check, and land. Bring your leg in, push it out, and you can see my foot is sideways, and I'm pulling my toes towards my face, which is what we want. You can put that down, and we can do it again. All right? So. Quick hold on the roundhouse kick just to check it. Hold it a little longer on the side kick. Ready, kick, quick, put it down, hold it. As you hold this, you might be like, you know, this is actually hard, it takes some strength. I know that's why we're doing it, all right? Let's go, three, turn, point your toes, land it down, bring it in, bring it out, and let's go back. Turn and kick, hold it, just for a second, bring it down, kick, hold it out for the, a little bit longer than just a second. Okay, one more together, then we got to do the other side. Ready, kick, boom, hold it, good. Okay, 
I'm moving the chair to the other side. Maybe you are too. Maybe you're kicking the other direction. Don't matter too much. Here we go. Roundhouse kick. Hold it for a second. Put it down. Side kick. Hold it a little longer. And then come on back. Again, roundhouse kick. Boom. Land. Kick. And put it back down. All right. Three more. Turn and kick. Put it down. Push it out. Oh, my chair moved. Hopefully your chair doesn't move too much. All right. Kind of toss my balance there for a second. That's okay. Turn and kick. Hold for a second. Put it down. Hold it for more than a second. Whoop. Lost my balance again. Bad chair or bad me. I don't know which one today. Again, roundhouse kick, just for a second, kick it out, here's the side kick, okay, very nice, very nice, okay, so we've talked about our kicking foot, now we gotta worry about the other one, the base foot, we're switching back, okay, so, when I do a roundhouse kick, there's some variety as to what's right. I can have my, my toes point towards the chair. They can point backwards. They can be anywhere in the middle. Be a little crooked, that's fine. Depending on how flexible you are, your base foot will rotate. But in the very least, it has to point at least towards the chair when I turn it. If I don't turn it enough that it points at the chair, it puts pain into my knee, takes away power, leads to injury. No one wants that. So I'm, I'm a little bit more flexible than most people, right? So when I do my roundhouse kick, my foot's almost backwards. Toes are pointing over there. If yours are turned that far, that's fine. When you do the side kick, your heel always points where you're kicking. So my foot is completely backwards. All right, I'll show you that from the side so you'll get a better view of that, right? So right now, you can see my foot. A couple inches so you can see it better. I go to kick. My foot is turning almost backwards because I'm pretty flexible, like I said. When I do my side kick, you can see this foot. Toes are pointed that way. It's completely backwards. My heel is towards my target. That's what we want. Okay. So that base foot position, really important, especially as you're getting more powerful if you don't want to hurt yourself. Right? Again, I'm a big fan of not hurting myself. <laughs> I hope you are too. Right? So, for this one, we'll hold for a second on each kick. We'll like a brief hold on a roundhouse kick, brief hold on our side kick. But I want you to check your base foot this time. If it's turned enough, good. Progress through. If you're finding that you're not turning it, maybe you want to go back and do that kick again, right? Maybe you get behind me, or you pause the video to be able to go back and redo it and get it correct. That's fine. What you don't want to do is do it wrong so you can keep up with me, right? That would be a mistake. All right, so we're in our fighting stance. You can see my front foot kind of points right towards my camera. I do my roundhouse kick. It's turned at least towards the chair. It's actually almost backwards already. And then I do my side kick. It's definitely backwards. I can see it. Hopefully you can look at your foot. Right? If you can't, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Should be easy to see your foot, but that's okay. Ready? Roundhouse kick. Check the one on the floor. Yep, it's turned. Put it down. I do my side kick. I can look right down at it. It's backwards. Fantastic. All right. Let's go three. Ready? Turn. Again, I can hold on to that chair for balance. Right, and I can kick. Make sure that base foot is turning. Right, if it's not turned properly, go back. Do it again. Don't accept a mediocre kick. Go do it again and again because turning that base foot enough is so important for a powerful kick and a healthy kick. Ready, kick. Check your toes. You can check both feet if you're fast enough. Oh yeah, that one's going backwards. That one's flexed. Good job. All right. One more time, let's do it. Check my foot, 
Hopefully you are too. Checking my foot. All right, very nice. So we did five on that side. If you aren't getting it, pause this. Do a few more at your own speed. There's no reason for you to try and keep up with me. I'll wait, but if you got it, we'll switch to the other side. Do the same thing. Make sure your foot is turning on the floor, right? So if you're doing your uh, left leg roundhouse kick, toes pointing that way, probably a chair or the table, couch, whatever you're using, right? I kick, I check my foot. It's pointed almost backwards because that's how I do my roundhouse kick. I do my side kick. My foot's backwards because that's the way everybody should do their side kick. Right? Let's go again. Ready? Roundhouse kick. Turn. Put it down. Side kick. Good. Just like that. Those little things, man, make a huge difference. Ready? Roundhouse kick. Put it down. And what you're going to find is if you practice this and you pay attention to these little details now, your form is going to be so much better because so often this mistake or this mistake in terms of your kicking foot, that's the thing that holds people back, right? We're working on developing our strength, our balance, our form, all the good stuff, all the reasons we kind of do forms. Ready? Turn and kick, pointed and turned, and then side kick. Flexed and turned. All right, I think we got two more. You can do as many as you want, but I'm gonna do two more. Ready, turn, kick, in, kick. Make sure that foot is flexed. Okay, one more. Ready, turn and kick. Bam. Put it down, side kick. Boom, foot's backwards. Fantastic. All right, everybody. So. Great job working on those little footwork details on your base foot, on your kicking foot. Practice as much as you need to, but for now, let's get moving on to the next part of class. For this week for our end game, we're gonna be doing one of our weekly challenges brought to us by Sensei Mark, right? Uh, this is one of my favorites. There's a whole playlist of them that we produce each week, but uh, you can take a look at it. Fun one with some socks and some coins. Pick Pick which one you do, give it your best shot. There you go. What's up guys, Sensei Mark here again. Today, I wanna to teach you two of my favorite drills for building coordination and hand speed. Let's do it. So, for this first drill, all you're going to need is a pair of socks. Now, you can actually use maybe a small ball or a small stuffed animal you can grab with one hand, but today, I'm using socks. So, what you can do is you're going to ball them up nice and tight, just by rolling them inside the other one, and you're going to hold that sock ball in one hand. And the way this looks is out, like I just did a punch with one arm. Now, the other hand is by my face. Now, the goal here is to drop the sock. And as it's falling, I'm going to switch my hands quickly and snatch it out of the air. Now the rules are, I have to grab from behind it. I can't grab from underneath or from the side. That's cheating. So I hold it out straight, other hand by my cheek. I'm going to punch and switch. Grab. And I'll do the other hand next. And the goal here is to get as many times in a row as you can and as fast as you can. Like this. All right, now this next drill is way harder. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take two of any coins you like. Today I'm using nickels. You can use quarters, pennies, personal preference. And you take one of those coins and lay it down flat on the back of your hand. The other coin, you do the same, but on your arm. So you have coin on your hand and your arm. And you take your whole arm, flick it up in the air. The coins will fly up, hopefully not too high. And then you're gonna try to grab each coin out of the air using one hand at a time, just like this. And then you're gonna put them back on. You're gonna try for round two. So put it in the back of your arm, balance, flick up, snatch, snatch, and there you have it. So for a couple of you guys who think that one's too easy, go ahead and try three coins. So the way this one works is you're gonna put a coin in the back of your hand, 
another in the back of your arm, and the third one also on the back of your arm. You can do the same thing. Flick up and then try to catch all three, like this. There you go guys, that's just two of my favorite drills to work on, my precision and my speed and my striking. Maybe next time I see you, you can show me how many punches you got in a row or how many coins you flipped up and caught. But until next time guys, 